Last week you saw us move down onto the Crown Fleet Cut. This week we're going out into the big wide world of canals. Jubilee. Come and join the Jubilee. It's Jubilee weekend. Everybody's having a good time. It's lovely. We've got reinforcements this weekend in the form of Colin and Ed, uh, a couple of my friends from school and uh, Joe's parents. So the living is easy. Americano with regular milk. Oh. Hey, Anyone can stay in a good Yeah. just for me for practice. It's quieter today. The weather's a bit against us. Spring's roundabouts in it in this game. <laughs> yes we do, yeah. We've got we've got lemon drizzle or we've got scones with jam and cream. There you are. I've put them that way because there's a little pot of jam that's like open top so thank you. What a meal that's going to be. He had fish and chips and he's going to chase that with a lemon drizzle and a scone. <sighs> he's actually not allowed to serve customers. He's not done his health and safety. Good morning. That's it for the Jubilee weekend. We're heading out onto the Trent and Mersey. We've got a mission to try and get to Coventry Floating Market by the beginning of July and trade along the way. So this is us setting off. Wish us luck. Well, we're filling it with water first and we've got a couple of engine repairs to do, but you know, we're setting off soon. We're on the road again. Rested up, heading up to Shardlow in almost exactly the same formation and doing the same journey that we did a year and a half ago when we first went to open the cafe for the first time. The big difference this time is that we've got William and Joe and I have both sort of taken it in turns to feel a bit nervous about doing this kind of thing with a baby on board. Days like this kind of make it seem more possible but after sort of like more than 10 years of living on boats, we're still at the stage where we're trying to convince ourselves that we know what we're doing enough to put somebody else through it with us. But whether we're ready or not, it's goodbye to the old sort of semi-settled way of life, living on a mooring and having all the comforts that come with that. And we're embracing uh, the new life as we planned it. Living sort of on the hop, Trying to make a go of it with this cafe. 
and now seeing if we can make it a, a real family business. We're going past Sawley Marina now. Spirits high, wind windy, clouds ominous. That's the full report. We're going along again, we just stopped for fuel. Um, something well sad happened. I dropped my phone in the, in the like, I was stepping over onto the boat and I dropped my phone in the water, which I kind of don't care about apart from it. it had like all of my photos, just all the photos of William and everything that I haven't like backed up. So let this be a lesson to you. Everybody just back up your phone now. <laughs> I will get over it, but it was just like a shock. And I always think like, oh, just go and get your photos, like always back them up or like go and get them printed off. And then I forgot to. Luckily we make these videos. So that's a bonus. I don't think I'm going to get a smartphone again, you know? It lures you into a, like a false sense of security or something. I'm just going to get a film camera because that is just too sad. Um, thanks for watching the video so we can keep the videos going so we do have some record of you but it's just a bit upsetting isn't it <sighs> pretty windy out here but now we're just out on the other section of the river above Sawley, we stopped there for diesel. Now we're just winding our way up to Shardlow. That's it, first sign of the Trent and Mersey Canal, which will be our home canal now for the next few weeks. We'll stop at Shardlow and Orowas, that's the plan, and then we'll turn left at Fradley and head down to Oxford, or Coventry first. That's the plan as it stands, but it's liable to change, as all plans are really. Here we come to a confluence of two rivers. I think it's the So and the Derwent, and it makes the boats go a little bit as the two rivers sort of push and pull you about a little bit. Quite a lot at the moment, <laughs> probably partly due to not really paying too much attention. I'm just hanging out the side hatch here. There he is. Um, so I can hear William. I haven't like rigged up the baby monitor yet. Uh, so I can't go too far because with the engine noise, I can't really hear him if he cries. But it's quite nice just having the side hatch open and tooting along. We're going to try and moor up in the centre of Shardlow, which last time we couldn't do because they were like doing the tow path. But it's really nice there. Um, like we walked along it or we could see it. Oh, getting really close to the flood lock. <laughs> Up close and personal with some ivy there. Yeah, William has really um, slept through, I think he, like the locks, he slept through all the locks, which is a good testament to Vic's driving. Um, and also William's sleeping. I can't lose my camera, and my phone and the camera all in one day, nearly did though. Yeah, I'm really pleased because we there was quite a lot of building up to this, well I built a lot up to it, um, to see how it would be moving with William, but it's been pretty good. His bedroom is like the little snug right at the front of the boat, so when the lock gates, um, well the paddles open and let all the water flood in, you can hear it, so I think it's quite nice, like white noise, it's very relaxing being in there. So it feels like a pretty momentous day, I think. We're looking out for a mooring spot now and chancing it because we've just gone past one. So we're hoping that there's something around this corner. 
That looks like it could be a good mooring for us if there's enough space. Someone woke up just in time. We're in Shardlow. And just like that, the big red beast is back. We're in Shardlow. I've got Holly's engine up and running. She's just uh, had a total full tank of fresh diesel that we got on the way. So I thought I'd try sort of running some of that good stuff through now. It's smoking like an absolute chimney. But I think it's pretty good. The engine's running, that's all I really care about. My solution sort of from now on, my, it was my standard solution for most engine things, is just going to be to thrash it, really. Everywhere we go now, as, as much as I can, like whenever we get on rivers and stuff like that, I'll give it a good sort of push around. And I'll sort of hope that that, you know, has a sort of reviving effect on the engine. That's my, my best guess and my favourite solution for for any mechanical problem. That's my new phone. I went and got it this morning. But I'm just doing some baking now. Um, Williams with Vic. And um, I'm just getting some lemon drizzles in the oven. I've just put a couple of lemon drizzles in and I'm gonna make two more, I think, after this. I'm making the loaf. Um, ones because they've been turning out really good. Action. We're ending this episode with a public service announcement. Because it was my phone that got dropped in the canal, um, we don't have access to Instagram and all those things at the moment. So we're here to say we're open in Shardlow this weekend, which is the 11th and 12th of June for coffee and cake from 11 till 3. Hopefully we'll see some of you down here. But if not, thank you for watching and a big thanks to the patrons. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. And action. Well, since it was my phone that got dropped in the canal, um, oh wait, I'll start again. <laughs>